Any examples used are for illustrative purposes only and do not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situation, or needs, and may not be suitable for all investors. It is not intended to predict the performance of any specific investment and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Welcome to the Your Family Bank Show with your host, Larry McLean. Larry and the Your Family Bank team seek to educate Americans just like you by providing real strategies for protecting and growing their hard-earned money. Get set for a show full of economic news and financial information affecting your bottom line. Larry wants you to reach the financial freedom you've worked so hard for. So now, let's start the show. Here's Larry McLean. Hey, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're listening to the podcast today or the YouTube channel or the uh, where we're at today on our uh, website. And this is Larry McLean, founder of Your Family Bank. This is Your Family Bank Show. Thanks a lot for listening. Give us your time. Make sure you like us. Uh, we'd love to get those likes out there. Matt, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Larry. I hope you are as well, sir. Yep, I do, buddy. I had, I had, I had eye surgery yesterday, so I'm... I'm kind of seeing with one eye today a little bit. I, that's why I'm I'm actually not in the studio at the office today. I'm uh, from my office uh, here at home because I went to surgery yesterday and then a doctor's appointment follow up today. And they said for me to stay home one more day, but I didn't want to miss this uh, podcast. So here we are, man. I'm 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 working hurt. What you know? What I'm saying that's how you do it. Right? <laughs> that's like if if you were a gangster, your name would be Larry One Eye or something. That's, <laughs> exactly. Or, or, you know, we were in Tampa not too long ago for the uh, the kickoff for Marilife, and we had the, uh, oh, what do they call it? The Pirates down there the same week that we were there, uh, which the Gasparilla thing. I, Gasparilla I never seen, Yeah, I've never seen so many Pirates in all my life, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I, I fit right in right now with the patch on there for sure. So, <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, today we're going to talk about a lot of different things. When it comes to your money, get more in 24. I think they got that from me, doggone it. Uh, I said that the Marilife kickoff, get more in 24. So <laughs> I tell you, you guys, you guys are a little sticky, you know what I'm saying? I got you, but I got you. But anyway, we do want to get more in 24, and uh, I, t I tell our people we're going to kick down the door in 24, and hopefully that's going to happen. So welcome to the show today. Let me give a shout out to our, our local area, which is St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, our office is here at World Golf Village and uh, love World Golf Village. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, lived in St. Augustine for almost 15 years, born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. So a shout out to Jacksonville. You're you're right down the street, right across the line. So uh, give us a call here at 904-940-9555 if I can help you. We got a lot of great things to talk about today on the show, man. It is jam-packed. Uh, full of information today and one of the questions uh, th that we talk about Matt today is do you have a retirement tax bomb <laughs> well man you can't even say bomb anymore <laughs> anywhere if you're at an airplane for sure or something like that for sure but I guess we could talk about it on the show and be okay and not get messed up here uh, as we go today right buddy yeah you know when we're talking about taxes you can talk about it because uh, a lot of people <laughs> You know, they probably do have that retirement tax bomb waiting for them and don't even know it. Yeah. And it's just it's just ticking. It's like those uh, it's like those old spy movies. You know, which wire do I cut? Well, I yeah. guess we'll probably tell you. <laughs> I think it's the red one. I think is always the one they cut. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, absolutely. And now for some financial wisdom, it's time for the quote of the week. More people should learn to tell their dollars where to go instead of asking them where they went. That's a great, great one there, buddy, uh, uh, for sure. Uh, we need to tell those dollars where to go. But most people are asking, what the heck? Where does, where does my money go, actually, at the end of the, at the, end of the month or in, end of the year, even when you see? Because we're just going through the end of the year and people are getting their uh, pay stubs and 1099s and all that in and their, their numbers. And they're probably saying, good night, where'd all my money go, right? So absolutely. Yeah, definitely so. So let's look at, we're going to look at 10 ways to improve your finances. We're going to, maybe if you're closing in on retirement, tips for catching up on your retirement savings. I think that's great. And do you have a retirement tax bomb? Uh, that's, we just, we just talked about that. And then we're, <laughs> we're going to talk about the Super Bowl. Boy, that's on top of everybody's list right now uh, in Las Vegas, for sure. That's, 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 that's a happening place 
I mean, the betting capital of the world is 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 there for sure. So we shall see how that goes this week. But um, anyway, uh, we'll talk about that too. So getting close to retirement, you know, here are four tips to boost your savings if you're getting close to retirement. Saving and investing for retirement is crucial, no matter what your age is, really. But when you get close, you know, to those golden years, even more importantly, to make sure that you have enough set aside to live the lifestyle that you expect or you want to for those who are getting close to retirement but aren't quite, you know, quiet yet in the re- what we call retirement uh, red zone uh, just yet. Here's some tips or steps to that you need to generate extra funds. So when we're talking about the red zone, we're talking about like five years for retirement, right? We're getting really, really close to that. Uh, talking about you know football and being in being in the red zone a little bit, but we've got we've got tips here that we, that we want to talk about. And number one is understand cash flow and be willing to adjust. Right at any age, it's important to assess what goes to fixed spending, um, which is monthly expenses such as your mortgage, uh, your bills, you know your basic living expenses. And compare with typical discretionary spending or what we call your wants, right? Uh, this helps you get a handle in spending uh, uh, with a typical uh, spotlight on excess cash that could likely shift really from discretionary bucket into a retirement savings bucket. So a lot of times we can say, well, okay, yeah, we want this, but maybe we're getting close to retirement. We need to kind of shift some of that money over uh, in that account. I know in in my own experience over the years and, 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 you know, the older that you get and, uh, you know, kids are, you know, leaving home, which that's a good thing, <laughs> by the way, if they make sure they don't come back, I always tell people, I says, listen, you know, one of the greatest things is, is, as your kids leave home. Uh, but the other greatest thing is make sure they don't come back because guess what? They don't come back by themselves. They always bring people with them when they come back. Right. And so, um, I, I used to teach. I used to teach this all the time. I would say, "Okay, how do you keep your kids from not coming home?" And one of the ways you do, you move in a gated community, Matt. You get in that gated community, and you put you. you it's got a guard up there, right? And you put a red X uh, circle with their picture on it, so they cannot get through the gate. Uh, and that works, by the way. It absolutely works. Uh, a lot of people say, "Well, I'll move." Now they'll find you. So you got to get. You got to get where. You got to get in a compound where they can't get in, if you will. So, but as you get close to retirement, it may be time to double down on uh, on spending and saving habits. For example, for empty nesters, they're, you know, the people that the kids are leaving, it may make financial sense to start downsizing the home a few, we- few years before you're in retirement to provide a cushion and additional assets, relocating to a cheaper uh, housing market, if you will, in some instances can potentially unlock assets in home equity, further aiding in retirement, uh, you know, readiness. I, I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example. I just had a lady just recently. She's been with us, gosh, that her and her husband has been with us probably over twenty years, and maybe even twenty five years. Um, great couple. Um, this uh, he passed away about three years ago. Uh, their children live up in Virginia, and they lived right here at World Golf Village, right here, right around the corner from my office. And they bought that house many, many years ago, and so she got ready to sell it. And so when she did sell it, there was there was almost, you know, five or six hundred thousand dollars of assets there that she could use to, you know, help in retirement. And she was, you know, going to assistant living type uh, facility. Uh, and she was able to provide, you know, the money from the pension, the Social Security, and all to take care of the monthly things. So that gave her uh, some money there by doing that. So sometimes downsizing makes sense. I know in my own life, uh, I downsized, and we had a, you know, a huge house and uh, you know almost four thousand square feet. And so we we downsized, and it made all the difference in in, in the world in regards to that. Number two, makes you know we have to. Uh, number two would be. Make small yet meaningful increases, right? So Vanguard's annual How American Says report recently highlighted that in 2022, nearly a quarter of the workers saved at least 10% of their income. Now that's great. Uh, you know, that's at you know 25% uh, 
of, of the workers, and the average deferred rate retained at historical 7.4%. So combined with the employer contribution and the total average contribution was about 11.3%. So many Americans are on solid track, but there's still a lot of work to do, okay? If because of inflation and all the things that we're facing today, if possible, save 12 to 15% of your income toward retirement savings. Uh, aim to increase your 401k contributions by 1% each year or make it a personal mandate to boost your contributions every time you get a raise. A lot of people, you know, they 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 live, uh, they get a raise and guess what? Now they can spend more, right? And they get another raise, now we can spend more. Well, you can, but a better situation is that let's stay where we were and let's take that money uh, that we get a raise in and reinvest that money in our retirement so we can we can have a better income when we do retire uh, going forward, right? So we, we want to make sure we do that, Matt, in regards to that. While these are minimum changes uh, and may not feel significant on the front end, the power of compounding interest, of course, will pay off big time over a long period of time. I mean, that's the thing. That's the magic of compounding interest. Uh, when individuals is, you know, a decade, let's say, outside of retirement, they should aim to contribute the highest amount possible to a retirement account. So what are we doing? I mean, at the end of, at the end of the day, Matt, we're just paying ourselves, right? I mean, you know, we gotta we gotta pay us, man. I mean, that's uh, we work hard, buddy. We we want it. We we are to get paid. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we need to do that, right? Oh yeah, you know, future you will thank you big time if you do that because yeah. uh, there, there's actually there's a, a commercial or a public service announcement that I really like that um, I've heard. You know, they'll play them sometimes late at night or early in the morning on on radio stations. And there's uh, uh, the guy who's like uh, putting money away uh, in some uh, some particular vehicle. His friend happens to walk by and he says, uh, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm just making sure that I have you know some money put away for." whatever his name is, you know, Bob 2037 or whatever. He's like, who's Bob 2037? He's like, well, but that's me when I'm in retirement. He's like, I'm paying myself. And so that's what you got to do. You got to make sure that you, uh, a future you specifically, has money to live on. Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do it. I was, I was in Lowe's the other day and I went through the self-checkout, right? They have a, you scan your own stuff now. And usually that one is very, a lot faster than the one that you go on with the cashier. But they always have a you know an employee stand there to to you know help you out or or make sure you're not running out. I don't know which one, <laughs> but probably both, right? <laughs> but, yeah. but I asked her when I when I finished, I said, "Listen, I can't wait to get my health benefits because I work here now apparently, and I like to see see my 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 retirement program since I'm now a cashier here working here for Lowe's for nothing actually." <laughs> <laughs> So, Love it. but you know what? Give yourself a raise, put that money, put some of that money back and start saving more, more for yourself, right? And number three, consider a catch-up contribution. So this is a great thing about if you're 50 and older, and that's, you know, that's, that's a great thing about being 50 and older. Here's a, here's a wonderful thing about that. Your catch-up contributions are offered in eligible retirement vehicles, such as an IRA or 401k or simple IRA or 403b or 401ks, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, for those who need to make or mi or missed retirement opportunities earlier, when guess what? Maybe they were couldn't put money back for retirement with kids and life and all the things you have, and you've got a way to put extra savings um, in, you know, and do a catch up. Uh, and and by the way, uh, in 2024, the standard annual IRA contribution is seven thousand dollars, but at age fifty, uh, an older uh, can actually contribute an additional thousand dollars in 2024, so eight thousand uh, dollars, which is a catch up, which is what your contributions was and are the catch up. So uh, you can get ahead of that thing a little bit, that's for sure. So put extra. You can do that if you're over the age of fifty and do the catch up in regards to that. Um, number four, don't let market volatility scare you. You know, quite simply, do not let emotions get the best of you. And aim and never abandon long-term retirement savings plan. Market volatility will always be present, but it's incumbent on long-term investors to weather the storm. You know, I, I think of Warren Buffett, and probably he's the most renowned, you know, investor that probably most people know out there. 
And Warren says, you know what? He buys companies, right? He doesn't buy, he don't buy stock to sell it. He buys companies. And if you're going to buy, if you're buying to sell the stock, you probably shouldn't be in the company at all. And so I know that's true in my own portfolio. I can tell you that. So I have been tempted at several times to sell some stock, uh, but I've held, I, I've, you know, I've, I've kind of took his advice and, uh, and I've held on to that. And I can tell you what, it's been great advice from him and for me personally, uh, for sure. So you can't let emotions play into it uh, at, at, at all in regards to that. So uh, we've seen some amazing, amazing benefits for the stock portfolios that we that we do at EL does here at um, Elm Wealth Investment. So, all right. So number one, this can be difficult to remember. The market is wreaking havoc on a portfolio as you get close to retirement. For those within five to fifteen year window, this is where a trusted financial advisor professional can come into play, as they can help access the reevaluate number one your your risk your financial plan financial pros can be financial coaches but importantly behavior coaches as well um, in reminding investors to stay the course and stick in designated plan that was built alongside their trusted advice so here's the thing 92 percent we talked about this last week i think matt but 92 percent of people today do not have a financial uh, coach or, or advisors at all that means only 8% of America does. And and so uh, it makes a huge difference on, a, uh, you know, just a sounding board to talk to people in regards to, I know um, we got, we have a, we have a client coming in this week that heard through the podcast and he happens to be local and he called in and says, Hey, I got this amount of money. I don't know what to do with it. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I just inherited this money. You know, I want it for retirement. And I need some advice. Well, you know, good for him, right? I mean, because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, people need good, sound advice to make sure that they're doing the right thing or give some options at least to what they could do for their funds and make that happen for them in regards to that. Lastly, if you haven't heard from your advisor lately, please talk to us and get a second opinion. Uh, We can help you set you on the path for retirement. You're always envisioned for yourself and your family. Let us help you. Uh, in regards to that, I heard this the other day. Uh, 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 Mark Cuban, uh, which is the uh, uh, w- very rich guy, right? I mean, one of the top guys, Shark Tank guy. I mean, he's the the Dallas Mavericks. I think he sold part of that or some of it anyway. Um, but he he was. They were talking about. They said seventy five percent of the wealthy people. Seventy five percent of the wealthy people say one of the one of the best investments you can do is get out of debt. And, and, you know, that's what your family bank does, right, is get people out of debt. But you've got more Cuban. You've got, uh, you know, just a host of people out there uh, that talk about being debt free. Uh, Warren Buffett says the same thing. I mean, you know, when the people st- talk about they got this money on their credit cards, you know, and they're paying, you know, 17, 18, 17 percent, 29 percent, you know, at the end of the day, you pay off that credit card, you're now making that same interest rate that you were making. So um, a lot of times financial advisors, Matt, they don't look at liabilities. They only look at assets. And and the great thing about what we do here at Your Family Bank, not only look at assets, we certainly look at liabilities and try to turn those liabilities into assets for our clients. And that could be huge, uh, especially getting close to retirement and getting to that point in retirement. So Give us a call here at 904-940-9555, or you can reach us um, on our website at yourfamilybank.org. And if you come on that website, put your information, someone will contact you. And certainly, I mean, just have a phone call with us. You know what I'm saying? Just have a phone call with us and have a conversation, and that doesn't cost you anything. And just, you know, maybe you have some questions. Maybe it's maybe it's questions on taxes. Maybe it's questions on the legal side. I mean, we have a we have a team of professionals here. Uh, that's it's, I mean, you, if it's in the financial world, uh, we know about it. And by the way, if we don't have an answer, we have buttons we can push to get those answers for you. And guess what? You know, I have a lot of people sometimes call me and they use our CPAs firms and stuff like that, but they'll call me about tax questions. I said, guess what? I can't give you tax advice, but guess what? I can get an answer for you and push a button and get you on the phone and get that answer. It doesn't cost you anything. So that's one thing that we try to do is help everybody do that. All right. So 
10 Ways to Improve Your Finances in 2024. Uh, this was our Money on U.S. News report, uh, personal financing. Uh, so when it comes to improving your financial situation, Matt, the most important step is getting started. Uh, guess what? That's in anything you got. You got to take a first step, right? You got. I always tell people, you got to get out of the boat, right? I mean, Peter, you know, Peter holds the record of anybody walking on water for sure, but he's the only guy who got out of the boat, right? So he's got he's got that record, uh, uh, so to speak. But at the end of the day, you got to take that first step. You got to make that stir step in regards to that. So short term financial goals uh, achievable within the year. Number one, perform a financial checkup to review the past year and set goals for your current year. Check your credit score and pull up free credit reports and, and accuracy and and to make sure there's nothing on there that you don't know about. That, and, and, and we've seen people have that situation for sure. Create a timeline for goals, balancing, uh, uh, you know, competitive objectives and prioritizing bases upon available income. Uh, reconfigure your budget by reviewing expenses and aligning expenses with values and identifying areas to cut expenses. Uh, some of those cut expenses could be in your investment fees that you're paying for sure that you probably don't know you're paying regards to that. Review and adjust investment strategies and at least once a year align with your goals and risk tolerance and and and, and the time horizon. Um you know, at the end of the day, uh this has been said and if you and 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 by the way, it's 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 amazing that a study was done like this. But they say, Matt, if you write your goals down every day there's 900% chance that you will meet those goals. A 900% chance if you write those goals down every single day, right? Now, I I will tell you this. I have not done that, but I am going to start doing it because I heard that. And if there's a 900% chance it's going to work, buddy, I'm, I'm going I'm to put it to the test myself. So I am going to do that. So that's what the study, that, what the study was done. A nine hundred percent chance for you doing it. So that's your that's your short term financial goals. So let's talk about long term. Okay, so long term, build an emergency fund. Ah, that's just what your family bank does. One of the great things about your family bank, we put in an emergency fund right away. Uh, over time, by accum- uh, uh, automating your monthly expenses into high yield savings account. That's the other thing right now. I I, I know it's Swab and in the EL and the in the in the guys on their wealth side. Uh, they, uh, I mean, they've got some pretty good CD rates right now, and, and I know that's why we we look at probably 250 banks out there, and able they're able to purchase those CDs. So, you know, pretty good interest rate. Even even the money market right now, as Swab's paying between four and five percent, which is not a bad day at the market uh, in regards to that. And number two, increase retirement savings by adjusting monthly contributions to IRAs. Workplace retirement plans or fixed index annuities, you know, maybe look at that situation. Number three, prioritizing paying down debts. Boy, this is a big one on our radar plan. I mean, we're big, big proponents of that, particularly credit card debt with regular payments to save on interest. I think we got a better way of doing that. But but if you, if you have debt, you know, really, if you have, and, and this is a funny thing, Matt, I have people say, well, I don't have any debt, <laughs> right? Just a mortgage in a car. That's all I got. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's debt. Hello. So I just want to make sure that you understand that that is debt. So let's let's get rid of it, man. We we talk about that all the time on how much it costs you and 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 how much interest it it creates for sure. Uh, and you want to save that. All right. Increase earning potential by exploring new job opportunities or side income, updating uh, LinkedIn profiles and gaining more skills uh, as we go. And identifying personal financial priorities, such as saving uh, for a down payment or building an education fund for your children. We don't we don't talk about a lot about education for children, but here's what I can tell you. There's a lot of great ways to save for kids. And 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 and, and you know, at the end of the day, there are there are there are, there are different ways that you can save for children. But there's a lot of different ways that you could say that doesn't impact their FAFSA, which when they get ready to go to college, that you can, you know, find grants monies for those kids to go to college. And there's a lot of different disqualifying uh, situations out there 
that people don't know. And here's what I will tell you. If you have a kid that, you know, let's say, uh, you know, just first year going to high school, a freshman, and you don't have college done yet, you may want to contact us and let you help you get there because there's some things that you could do maybe in the next three to four years that you can create funds for those kids to get to college uh, and get some grant money and things of that nature to do that. So give us a call here at 904 nine four zero ninety five fifty five if that comes if that comes into you. The other thing is I'll say is that um if you're if you, I want I, I do want to say this uh, shout out too when we talk about long term uh financial goals, there's a lot of things that pastors are we doing a lot of things oh help with pastors and the four three B nine market that can help then their housing allowance. Unbelievable what can be done in that arena. And most CPAs by the way do not understand that uh, working with pastors and staff members. So if you're a pastor or a staff member, please contact us. We can help you in that area too. And that's, of course, long-term planning and financial goals too as we go through this thing. All right, so tools and strategies. Number one, leverage technology, uh, systems, automation uh, uh, for financial tasks to save time and energy. Utilize budgeting apps, uh, automatic savings, and financial advisors as supplementary tools to imp- improve your finances. Uh, bottom line, speak to an experienced financial uh, advisor professional and build a plan that's tailored for you. Don't be in a do-it-yourselfer. I'm just telling you, there's help out there for you. And I'm not a do-it-yourselfer guy when it comes to anything at my house. <laughs> I mean, I do go I do go to Home Depot and Lowe's, but only to buy stuff. I don't go to get stuff to to build nothing with. I promise you that. That's not me uh that d- does that. I I I I was, I've learned more about just a ruler in the last week or so and then I didn't even know and I'm, you know, sixty years on on talking about a ruler for God's sake. I didn't know some of the things that you know what Matt, did you know that the ruler that you don't that you can actually use when you you know, you pull out the ruler, you know, uh uh, uh you know the silver part of it is measured. You actually can put that against the ground, and it's like two point one inches or something. I never knew that for all these years. I used to have to just go to the where steps and try to figure out how that was. But it's amazing what what you can learn on you to learn. I like, learn something new every day. I actually learned a lot on YouTube. I, I uh, installed a new car stereo one time from watching a YouTube video. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do. <laughs> no, I I watch it. This one guy says, "I." He always says, "Can you imagine? Twenty years, I didn't know this." And he does his he does his podcast with this great stuff on it. So funny stuff. Anyway, so here's what we'll do: we're gonna we we will closely examine any annuities that you may currently have. Uh, we'll discover exactly how much you're paying in fees. Uh, help you cut unnecessary costs in your IRA, 401k, or other retirement savings account. We're gonna help you show you how to get out of debt. I mean, that's that's a big one. Uh, help you to, to, to look at your debt and see how we can pay that off faster. Uh, we're going to help you with Social Security planning and determine the appropriate time to start taking those benefits. And that's a huge one right there, just as Social Security. And we'll compare your current situation to what's possible if you choose to work with us. You know, we, I mean, we're going to show you, you know, here's where you are today. Here's where you can be. What do you think? What do you want to do? You know, yes or no in regards to that. I don't know if it's, it can, <laughs> I, I just want to bring this up because I know I'm on camera. Uh, yesterday, I had this surgery and, and they put a, they, <laughs> they put, they put a, a permanent marker like, like on my, over on my forehead with an arrow pointing down at my left eye because that's where I had the surgery <laughs> and, and I couldn't get it off. I, I've been trying for two days to get it off and, or d- yesterday and all last night and this morning I, I showered and I, I tried to get it off. So I went to the doctor today and, for the follow up, and I said, "Listen, I got, I got the mark of the beast here on my in my forehead right here. I, you know, I need to get this thing off." They said, "Get some fingernail polish remover." So there's a tip for you today: if you get a black magic marker on your forehead, uh, you know, you can you can use fingernail polish remover to get it off. So that's what I was told today. So I know I know listeners out there, you may not have that problem, but if you ever do, now you got the answer for that. That <laughs> that will that will help you out for sure. All right. All right, so let's get to Matt. Let's talk about that that retirement tax bomb that we talked about earlier, right? Wanna we wanna we wanna give that some information. So 
uh, tips on defusing that tax bomb because one, because they offer tax uh, tax free qualified withdrawals, a Roth IRA or Roth conversion can be critically strategy for defusing the retirement tax bond in in, in your traditional IRA, 401k, or other pre tax uh, account, whatever it is, right? Uh, and set it up before you retire, and sometimes after retire, but better before you retire. So why does this matter? Well, it can protect you from future tax increases by the federal government. That's huge right there. Because number one, ladies and gentlemen, you don't you don't get a vote on that. They can change the tax law anytime they want to change it, and they don't have to ask you anything. They'll just go ahead and do it, right? So why does this matter to you? Well, the national debt is 34.2% trillion dollars and counting uh, every single second and if you go to usdebtclock.org you would uh, i mean it's clicking faster than you you can say literally split on that dog one thing so where are they going to get the money at where where's the money going to come from you know they got 34 trillion dollars out there and uh, guess what's out there that hasn't been taxed yet is your ira or 401k well guess what they are licking their chops on that bad boy because guess what? That's a that's a good place to get that money from. So if they can raise taxes, they're going to get more of your hard-earned money. So maybe it'd be better to do some tax planning, if you will, in the next three to four to five years where our tax rates is probably as low as they're going to be. They're probably going to be higher uh, here very in like two years. And so maybe it's time to look at converting over to a Roth and, pay, and for you to pay less taxes than to pay more in the future. You know, what you don't want to do is this. Don't stick your head in the sand and just wait. Do something about it. You know, I mean, do some tax planning. Pick up the phone and call us at 904-940-9555 here at the office and 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 let us, you know, let's get a plan. Let's let's put something together that makes sense to you that that at the end of the day it's going to save you money in in the four and you know again i don't we all have to pay taxes matt i understand that we all got to pay it we got to pay for the roads the bridges the firemen the you know the, the the police officers i'm all for that i don't mind paying my fair share i just don't want to pay the whole neighborhoods right i mean i i don't i, mean, I want to be able to be fair with this so three windows for roth conversion let's look at the, the first window for roth conversions uh, uh, is the years before enrolled in Medicare. But recall that Medicare means testing has a two-year look back on your income at age 63, determines your Medicare Part B and Part D premiums when you're 65. A prime window for Roth conversions is between retirement age, uh, retirement and age 62. If you end up triggering Medicare means testing for a year, or two while you do your Roth conversions. You may find it's still worthwhile, and you may be able to appeal uh, uh, appeal Medicare uh, means testing surcharges through IRS SS44. Well, there's a reason to talk to a professional right there, right? I mean, I mean, who who understood what I just said? Not even me understood what I was. I'm no, I'm kidding. But I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're you're doing the thing. So there's your first window. Uh, going forward. Your second window for Roth conversion is between your retirement and when you start taking your Social Security, right? Or, or pension income. So you can retire before you start taking your pension. Or you, I have a lot of clients that retire before they start taking that, right? Uh, their, their Social Security, at which point your income may significantly be higher and you may want to do a smaller Roth conversion. This is an ad additional argument for deferring Social Security for several years. Guess what? You can convert that now, pay the taxes lower, and you're you're helping yourself. The third window lasts until your required minimum distribution. Re required minimum distribution begins at age 73, and if you're still sitting on a retirement tax bond at that point, the conversion window is probably closed. So guess what? You need to get it done. Don't procrastinate. Uh, uh, make sure that you get in, in on, on board and get that stuff done, right? Because what? At least have a conversation about it and say, you know, here's my here's my 401k, here's my IRA. You know, let's do it. Let, what's the plan look like to do a Roth conversion? How's it going to save me much in taxes? What's that going to look like? You know what I'm saying? We got to see that because it could affect your your Social Security and being taxable. There's a lot of different situations 
uh, that we that we can take a look at, right? Want to know where your hard-earned money is going? It's time for an inflation demonstration. The cost of Super Bowl tickets is skyrocketing this year. Boy, okay, t- tickets in the NFL, uh, the biggest game of the year, are going to be a pretty penny this year. Why? It comes down to limited supply and demand. Plus, many people are willing to pay the higher cost of tickets, so they'll continue to go up. The expense it also depends on the seats that you choose in the stadium, right? As usual, the, the sporting events, the closer to the field that your seats are, the more expensive those seats will be. However, when you purchase tickets in a zone without a designated seat assignment, the, tip, the, the price of the typical uh, will be in a lower range. I didn't say low low range. I said lower range. And you'll see that in just a second, Matt. So if we look at, we've got the two top forming teams out there, but also you're paying for to see the halftime show, right? Now you got to have to, you got to bring in somebody to do the halftime show, right? And so there's another expense that people pay. So here's how much tickets have been selling for the various websites, according to parade.com. StubHub, I've used those for years. Um, the tickets, <laughs> this is, the tickets run, here. the minimum, you ready for this, Matt? The minimum, $6,561. Two, that's the low, the high is $89,000 for a ticket. I don't care how good they are. I'm sorry. I don't care. My TV, my 85-inch television are watching really, really good right here. I can save $89,000. I promise you on that one. But that's <laughs> that's crazy. I'm telling you, that's nuts. All right, so Seat Geek uh, is seven thousand to thirty-seven thousand. Ticketmasters, oh boy, eight thousand to fifty-five thousand, and Ticket Smart is seven thousand to forty-six thousand. Uh, so you know, on location is nine thousand plus. So if you're gonna go out there and buy you a ticket, you better have nine thousand dollars, at least nine thousand dollars cash to get you a ticket in Las Vegas to go. In regards to that, so. And that, oh, by the way, that's, I'm sorry, that's plus any fees that they charge, and they charge a ton of fees, by the way, uh, in regards to that. So what do you need to know about the Super Bowl uh, 58 this year? When this, what, you know, when is the Super Bowl? It is on February the 11th, uh, 2024. I think it's next Sunday, right? Uh, where is the Super Bowl held in 2024? It's going to be held at Allegiant Stadium in as Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, who's doing the halftime show? Usher is doing the halftime show. Uh, who's singing the national anthem? One of my favorite people, Reba McIntyre, is going to be uh, uh, singing the national anthem. Well, I'm happy about that. And what time does it start? Well, 6.25 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And where to watch the Super Bowl? CBS, Paramount, Nickelodeon, uh, family-friendly broadcast of the game, according to Yahoo Sports. Teams playing course, I'm sure everybody knows this, Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers. So I don't know. I, you know, you look at this, you look at this um quarterback for San Francisco, man. He was he was drafted 262, I think, or whatever the deal was. I mean, he was like a nobody, nobody, right? But look at here, look where he's at today. And he gives he gives all that credit to God. So I think that's awesome how he's able to do that. And and make that happen uh, for himself and his family. So there's a lot of good stuff on that. It's This Week in History. Historic moment, 1969, the Boeing 747 flies for the first time. The first flight took place in February the night. Uh, The 747 was certified in December of that year. It entered into service in Pan American on January 22nd, 1970. 747 was the first airplane called jumbo jet uh the first wide body airlines that's pretty good uh february 10th birthdays on this day 1955 american television personality jim kramer was born uh and he is host of mad money and anchor of squawk the street also born this day 1964 was american television and radio personality glenn beck was born there's another one right music on this debt 1971 baby we had the best music in the world American singer-songwriter Carol King released 
her second studio uh, album, Tapestry. It became one of the best-selling albums of all times, with 25 million uh, sold worldwide. The lead single from the album, Is Too Late, uh, spent five weeks on the number one shot in billboards in regards to that. So, um, you know, February the 11th, on this date, 1953, American politician Jeff Bush was born. Bush was the 43rd governor of Florida, 1999 to 207. And his younger brother, of course, former George W. Bush, and his dad was also the president of the United States. And February the 1st of this year, Larry McLean had his birthday. God bless Larry McLean there, February the 1st. And Matt, I, apparently you forgot my birthday. I didn't get no presents. I didn't get no flowers. I didn't get no candy. I mean, you got to get with the program over there, buddy. Y'all got to come out with this good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it, it must have gotten lost in the mail. It did. I, You know what? Uh, listen, I think you got the same thing you gave me last year, so it was a different color, I think. So there you go. My daughter, my daughter, my oldest daughter sends me every year I get, I always get orange slices. I love little those candy orange slices. And she sends me those every year. So you know, she sent me this year. And I text her back. I said, listen, Michelle, I said, listen, when I die, <laughs> make sure you put some of these candy slices in my casket because I may want a snack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she said, Dad, you're not going to die. But anyway, I like them orange slices. So anyway, had a great birthday, man. Everything's wonderful. So, buddy, listen, uh, thanks for the day. Uh, appreciate it. And um, let me know uh, if I can help you guys. 904-940-9555. Get a second opinion. Give us a call. I, uh, I, here, I'm writing a book, Matt. I says, uh, I can help you if you let me. Okay, that's the name of the book. I can help you if you let me. All right. So I'm working on that book for everybody. So, Matt, have a good day, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. You too. All right, man. Thanks for listening to the Your Family Bank Show with your host, Larry McLean. You deserve to work with an experienced financial professional who has a track record of helping clients exceed their financial goals by helping them eliminate debt and implementing safe and proven strategies. To schedule your free, no-obligation consultation with Larry, visit yourfamilybank.org. Fixed annuities, including multi-year guaranteed rate annuities, are not designed for short-term investments and may be subject to restrictions, fees, and surrender charges as described in the annuity contract. Guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying ability of the issuer.